Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the functions of synapses. You should then be able to describe temporal and spatial summation. In the last video, we looked at cholinergic synapses. We saw that an action potential triggers the neurotransmitter acetylcholine to be released from the presynaptic membrane. The acetylcholine diffuses across the synaptic cleft and triggers an action potential in the postsynaptic neuron. Because acetylcholine triggers an action potential, scientists say that the cholinergic synapse is an excitatory synapse. Now, synapses have a number of functions. Firstly, synapses ensure that transmission takes place in one direction only. That's because neurotransmitter can only be released from the presynaptic membrane, and neurotransmitter receptors are only found on the postsynaptic neuron. So because of this, transmission cannot take place in the reverse direction. In other words, synapses ensure unidirectional transmission. Secondly, one neuron can form synapses with a large number of other neurons. In this diagram, neuron A has formed synapses with neuron B, neuron C, and neuron D. So this means that an action potential in neuron A could trigger an action potential in neurons B, C, and D. Alternatively, several different neurons can form synapses to a single neuron. In this diagram, neurons A, B, and C have all formed synapses to neuron D. This allows the information from multiple receptors to be integrated into a single action potential. Now, a key idea you need to understand about synapses is summation. I'm showing you here neuron A forming a synapse with neuron B. Imagine that an action potential arrives at neuron A and triggers the release of neurotransmitter. However, in this case, insufficient neurotransmitter was released for neuron B to reach the threshold to trigger an action potential. The neurotransmitter is now broken down and recycled back in the presynaptic neuron. OK, now imagine that an action potential arrives at neuron A and again neurotransmitter is released. However, in this case, another action potential arrives at neuron A and more neurotransmitters released. Now the concentration of neurotransmitter in the synaptic cleft is enough for neuron B to reach the threshold and trigger an action potential. So in this case, the effects of multiple action potentials acting over time can add together. Scientists call this temporal summation. The word temporal means over time, and the word summation means add together. Temporal summation only works if the incoming action potentials are close together in time. In other words, they are high frequency action potentials. If the time interval between the first and second action potentials is too great, then the neurotransmitter released from the first action potential will be broken down before the second batch of neurotransmitter can add to it. Now, a different type of summation is called spatial summation. I'm showing you here two neurons forming synapses with one neuron. Imagine that action potentials arrive at both neuron A and neuron B. Individually, neither neuron releases enough neurotransmitter to trigger an action potential in neuron C. Now in this case, the effects of the two neurons can add together. So the combined effect of the neurotransmitter released from both neurons A and B is enough for neuron C to reach the threshold and trigger an action potential. So this is spatial summation, and the word spatial means in space. In the next video, we look at inhibitory synapses. 